Welcome everyone to day three of Career Bootcamp 2023. This morning's session is titled, Take Me With You. Please note that this session will be offered in English and French simultaneously. To view the French session, please re return to the agenda and click on the link for a manoir avec moi. I would like to begin by acknowledging the land on which we gather. Uh, today, I am coming to you from the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabeg. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the lands protected by the Dish with the One Spoon Wampum Agreement and is directly adjacent to the Haldeman Treaty territory. Career Boot Camp is the largest conference in the GC and the only goal is to support you in your career journey. As we move through today's session, Please share questions by using the Q&A button in the language of your choice. You can vote for questions you like by clicking on the thumbs up button. As with all FIN sessions, this will be recorded so you can go back and check the recordings and the insights at a later date. Without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mackenzie and get the session started. Thank you, Haley. My name is Mackenzie Ricketts and I am a Labor Relations Advisor with Correctional Service Canada. So some of my layers include being a woman, being of Canadian Caribbean descent, being a Black Employee Network committee member, and having a, a huge passion for advocating for marginalized groups of individuals. Now I am honored to welcome two great panelists today's for today's session, Steph Percival and Justine Reynolds. Steph is a senior analyst at CRA and a former free agent. She has been actively involved as a leader in grassroots employee empowerment, empowerment initiatives like Take Me With You and the Flex GC Network. In 2015, she launched Take Me With You at Health Canada, and then from there worked closely with her partners to support people in implementing Take Me With You in organizations across the public service. Now, Justine currently works at a departmental liaison in the Minister's Office at Infrastructure Canada. She is a founding member of the Mentorship Community of Practice and has led on implementing Take Me With You at DFO while, while she worked at that department. Take Me With You goes hand in hand with mentorship, so please reach out to Justine anytime to discuss mentoring. Um, associated links to those resources can also be found in the chat. And before we get started, we do have a couple of polling questions, and I'll, I'll just list them for everyone. So are you familiar with Take Me With You? Yes, no, you had no idea that was a thing. Um, second question, do you get to attend meetings to observe? Yes or no? Um, and then our last question is, are you invited to meetings where you do not contribute and only listen? While those answers are coming in, we're just going to go ahead and get started. And the first question I have is going to be for you, Steph. So give us a Coles Notes view of what Take Me With You is and explain its history. Thanks, Mackenzie. Uh, so the goal of Take Me With You is to empower employees to attend meetings and other activities related to their professional interests. So this could include things like management meetings where their work is being discussed, could include executive meetings where decisions are being made, or it could be just purely for career development interests. For managers, intentionally um, developing employees through Take Me With You can help them feel empowered and valued. And for employees, Take Me With You can be a way to better understand the organizational context and how decisions are made. It's also a great way to gain exposure to people and perspectives you might not otherwise be exposed to without Take Me With You. Uh, Mackenzie, you were telling me recently about uh, Take Me With You experience that you had. Uh, would you mind sharing that with everyone? Yeah, absolutely, Steph. So um, like I was telling you, a few weeks ago, I had a conversation with an executive in my organization. And during our conversation, another executive kind of just stepped in to give them some updates on a case that they were working on together. And it turned out that I had actually been working on that so I was privy to the information and so there were no privacy concerns but it gave me a really different perspective on the lenses management uses and 
I was really interested in, it was interesting to be in the room because I had originally seen it through my um, HR, LR lens, but hearing how they spoke and what was discussed, it really, it really just brought in the scope of my understanding and uh, of how and why they make decisions and come to the conclusions that they they come to. And I think that it was really important because it it provided a different context and and it allowed me to be exposed to to that way of thinking and to how they got to their conclusion. So yeah, I, I think this is a good segue into what I'd like to ask Justine. So Justine, how can employees at all levels approach their managers or or peers from other organizations or <clears throat> excuse me, other parts of the organization and show the value of being taken to meetings via Take Me With You? Thanks, Mackenzie. And hi, everyone. So excited to be here today. Uh, I wish we had more time. This is definitely a, a passionate subject of ours. So we'll try and get through as much as, as we can in the time that we have. Um, take me with you, the value of it, and, and Steph already alluded to this, but the value of it is really breaking down the barriers, increasing collaboration, making sure there's inclusivity at the table. Those voices that maybe aren't always asked questions are being asked questions. And that's really the value that Mackenzie just explained as well. Like, uh, being there at the table to hear how the decisions are made. So how can employees make that happen? Um, one of the primary examples that I always refer to uh, is YPN, the Young Professionals Networks Across Government. Um, that's specifically how I implemented Take Me With You at DFO and Coast Guard. Um, so I worked with the champion of the YPN to ensure that it was implemented within DFO. Um, there's two separate, two different ways I like to refer to it. So informal take me with you and formal take me with you. So one of the ways that employees can um, approach their managers is through informal take me with you, which is literally just going up to them and saying, hey, I'm interested in this, this meeting. Um, I'd like to learn more about this subject matter. Would it be okay if I tagged along to the meeting? Now that may look a little bit different in a hybrid approach. I'm literally picturing someone walking up to someone's office, but that looks a little different now with, uh, with the changing workforce and that's great. The other way is formal, more formal um, take me with you, which would be where, when it's established in a governance process, for example. So as you know, all of our departments have different standing committees, departmental management committee, departmental audit committee, so on and so forth. So having an actual observer seat on those committees is another way that it could be implemented. And that would be worked on with um, the governance team or HR. Um, that was implemented at DFO and Coast Guard through the YPN and we had YPN observer seats um, on the committees. And we always use the term observer, but it shouldn't really be observer because Take Me With You is about contributing to the conversation, not just sitting back and watching. So although that's the term we used, um, really it should be amended to be a participant. Um, so that kind of gives a quick overview of how you could implement it at your department. Um, also through HR, um, a lot of the time, this is an HR endeavor to, to take on, but um, if you're not particularly in HR and you want to bring it to your department, through the YPN is a wonderful way to do it. No, I there. thank you, Justine. I I really like how with Take Me With You, you have options. And like you said, formal or informal, you can choose and you can mold it to really suit and, and to accommodate your needs, which I think is really, really key and very important, especially in the hybrid working model that we've transitioned into. So, okay, we're going to do some rapid fire questions <laughs> for you both. And we'll start with Steph. So Steph, how can Take Me With You be used to support the call to action on anti-racism, equity, and inclusion? Thanks for that, Mackenzie. Uh, so the call to action um, was very explicit about the need to create space for marginalized voices, including bringing grassroots uh, networks and communities of practice to senior leadership tables. So Take Me With You can be a tool for increasing inclusion of new and important voices at decision making tables. Intentionally leveraging it to ensure diverse perspectives um, is one way that we can demonstrate action. So I think about it like this, is that we can choose to look around us and understand what perspectives we're not hearing. And we can choose to find those perspectives and listen. And if, we, if you have that perspective to bring, if you know that your perspective isn't one that's getting heard currently, then I really encourage you to ask 
ask for opportunities to take me with you. Um, Mackenzie, I'm really curious, um, and we chatted about this as we were prepping for the session, but like, um, I'm really curious about what you might see as um, important to um, like really like use Take Me With You as a tool to build inclusion and address the call to action. Yeah, um, I think you said it really well, Steph, that it's not enough to look around the room or look around the table and only invite those who aren't represented. But specifically, you need to look around the room, look around the table, invite those who aren't represented, and then listen to those perspectives in order to foster change. And Take Me With You is a really good tool for that. So being um, being a committee member to a Black employee network myself, we not only need, <clears throat> excuse me, our voices to be heard, but the ability to action or to help action the solutions. We need access to the resources to implement um, the recommendations, but we also really, really need the unwavering support and allyship from those around the table. And I think that Take Me With You is a really good tool because it allows those silenced voices or um, silenced groups to be heard and a plethora of voices because not every minority or marginalized voice is the same, but they all matter. They all provide different perspectives and can really give different context that is so valuable and much, much needed at, at these tables, at these discussions and in these rooms. And so, I think that's how we can really implement the call to action and make this very inclusive and equitable. So, um, Justine, I want to jump over to you and ask you a, a rapid fire question. And so the question would be, how can adopting Take Me With You be beneficial in a hybrid work environment? I'm terrible at rapid fire questions because I talk too much, so this will be a challenge. Um, Take Me With You is really beneficial in a hybrid work environment because it's teaching us to break barriers, enhance collaboration, like we've said a bunch of times. This is really something that's come out of the pandemic in, in all workspaces, right? Is that we've been able to work better together, quicker, easier, more efficiently. We see this with Career Bootcamp. We have so many learners here today and part of the session, which is amazing because of technology and being able to connect so quickly virtually. So that's really something we want to take with us when we move over from physical take me with you to the hybrid workforce that we're now in. So really important to remember that. And it, I feel like, and we all, I'm sure we can all agree that it makes things easier in a sense to implement take me with you in a hybrid workforce, because we're not just talking about bringing someone to a boardroom where there may be limited space. Maybe that's why they weren't invited to the table in the first place. Now we have MS teams where if there's, people in the room, we can still invite others to join virtually. So we really should take advantage of that and not uh, not have any reason to not include people at the table that should have a voice. Um, it can be argued, like I said, that taking me with you is even easier to adopt now. So many ways that we would encourage you to implement it within your department, whether it's through YPN or through um, HR, or just speaking to a manager that may support you. Um, it's, it's also important to ensure that conversations are inclusive to both people working in the office and working remotely. This should be the case for, for all meetings. Maybe someone's not in the office on a certain day. We need to make sure, okay, if we're having a conversation, you know, a, a coffee chat, that we need to include those who are working from home so that uh, work is more efficient and people aren't missing out on important conversations or decisions. Um, that just to go off of what you were saying, Justine, that's one of the really great features of Take Me With You. The versatility and the adaptability of this is, is amazing. And as you and Steph have been talking, I'm just recounting and going through situations that I've been in. And I'm thinking, oh, that was, that was a Take Me With You moment. It might not have been recognized or it might have been very informal. Um, but for example, attending our team meetings. Not everybody can always be in the office. And um, when we're discussing, it, for example, like specifically in my case, certain cases or legislation or jurisprudence, it's really important to have not only the perspective of your team, but the input and perspective of your management team. And if you're not there, you, you tend to miss out on things or you might not get the full context of something. And so um, 
being able to use this take me with you or this hybrid model um, allows people to be in the room to to have people's voices be heard. So um, definitely, definitely a, a really good resource to to be building on. Um, I want to be cognizant of time. So we will give the audience an opportunity to participate in this in the discussion. So let's take a look at questions in the chat. And audience, please remember that you can vote for questions by using the thumbs up feature um, if someone's already posted something that you like. So let's take a second and pop in pop into the chat. Let's see. Okay, I'm not I'm not seeing too many questions in the chat, but let me try this side. All right, so I'll post this to both Justine and and to you, Steph. Um, what kind of meeting benefits new employees attending with someone more senior? And we got a we got a quite a few likes on this one. <laughs> Um, so I can jump in first. What kind of meetings benefit new employees? Um, it really depends on your career aspirations. So, you know, joining a meeting to learn about a specific subject matter could be quite beneficial for you. Or joining a meeting to learn about a different sector or branch could be quite beneficial to see maybe you want to work there. Can I join in and see how their branch works? Is it something I'm interested in? Something you maybe have been thinking about career-wise but not really sure? Um, so learning about a new subject, a different area within the department, even cross horizontal um, experiences could be an opportunity as well, not just within your department, but um, attending other departmental meetings if it's permitted or hearing about something from someone else who does that in a different department. I'm thinking YPN cross collaboration with Finn, uh, lots of that happens often and really for career development. So think about what you want out of your career and maybe a meeting that might be beneficial to you. Um, I'll stop there for now. I'll Thanks. just quickly add on to that, that like um, participating and take me with you experiences um, when you're early in a new role can just help you build your network within not only your team, but your, your um, directorate or your branch. Um, so really it's beneficial just to, to build those connections and understand to what everyone is working on, because I find the more connected you are to all of the work that's happening within your team or your directorate, the better informed you are to um, respond when you're asked to, to work on different taskings because you understand the bigger context. So it's there's really quite a range. We're going to stay in, in the chat a little longer because I see quite a few questions with quite a few upvotes. So the next question is, how do you identify meetings to ask to attend if you are not informed about those meetings happening? So I can jump in here first. Um, and I think one of the, the best ways to do this is to actually build it as a team practice. Um, so hopefully your, your team's having like fairly regular connection points and you have conversations about the way that you work. So one of the things that you can do is just say, I'm, I'm interested in taking with you experiences um, and ask your manager, could you please, please brief us when there's a, like an executive committee um, meeting coming up or, or anything that's important coming up and then ask um, because the more transparent our organizations and our management team is about what's happening the more we can actually like put our foot forward and say like, okay, I want to attend this meeting. Um, but sometimes it does take that prompt from somebody. Um, and then, you know, if there's a certain subject matter that you're interested in or whatever, look at what networks are in your department and when they meet. And if you can attend some of those meetings, like look at what other branches there are, like check out your organizational structure and try to build your network and contacts because that can be a way to increase opportunities to attend meetings that you might not be aware of too. Yeah, I don't have much to add to that. Great job, Steph. Just um, keep your networks close and chat with people and find out what they're doing. That's what my suggestion would be. Find out what the departmental governance committees are. That's more formal, of course, but uh, there may be some you'd be interested in there as well. Mm -hmm. and, sorry, go ahead, Justine. 
No, I was just saying network, network, network. It's so important. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and this was this question was kind of touched on, I think, by um, by you, Justine. But the question is, can we attend meetings in a different department? Yeah, so that that's definitely open for debate. It's, it all depends on the sensitivity of the subject and whatnot. It's not something we really see very often if it's a team meeting or something that's really a, a tight knit group. Um, but something it could be an opportunity with a mentor. So take me with you and mentorship goes hand in hand. Um, if you have a mentor, perhaps they could bring you on to some meetings that they have within their department or um, a micro mission. All these things kind of tie together and sometimes there's a lot of overlap with taking with you micro missions and mentoring, um, but they all have the same common goal of enhancing our career development, breaking down barriers and improving efficiencies. So I'm thinking of maybe a micro mission you could ask um, through a federal youth network or YPN, um, a volunteer organization to set up micro missions, ask to do a micro mission with your supervisor. Most often they, would, they wouldn't say no. It's a great learning opportunity. Um, Nothing else really comes to mind at the moment. Steph, do you have anything to add? No, I think that was a great response. So we'll do two more questions because these are the last most upvoted questions. Um, so the question is, how do you combat the need to know basis so that um, so that's the reason why I can't attend those meetings? So I, I think I'm understanding it as how do you prove the value of you being at the meeting? Um, when it's on like a need to know basis or that's the response that um, you're getting is what I'm assuming the question's asking. So yeah, sometimes there might be pushback from management if it's a sensitive subject or whatnot, or they're, they're aiming to keep the room small, whether it's in-person room or virtual room. Um, but you could have a conversation with your manager and and, explain to them the value of this. There's gonna be less need for multiple meetings. You know how so many times we see a pre-brief, the actual meeting, and then a debrief, maybe even two debriefs, depending on who's there. So really improving efficiencies, having you who's working on the subject yourself or interested in the subject yourself being at the table creates, you know, saves so much time and effort all around, less meetings, less debriefs required. Um, so trying to prove the value of it and trying to prove the value of you being there should go a long way with your manager. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just expand on that quickly and say like, there are going to be times when due to privacy reasons, security reasons, et cetera, like there are just going to be things that, that not everyone is cleared to sit in on. Um, and that's, that's just part of how we operate and, and it makes sense, but, um, like we should be operating in a transparent management context. So um, I know we're not always in that, like in that scenario, but uh, there are lots of tools and resources on our GC Connects page. There's a group on GC Connects. Um, so if you search, take me with you, um, you should find the group. Um, it's all capitals, take me with you. Um, and there are lots of products on there about how to approach um, your management. Um, so you can get additional tips there. I'll also add that any, if you've added questions that don't get addressed today, um, if you go and post those questions in that group, I will come and answer them for you. And I'll also be at the networking event um, on Thursday. So if you join that, then I can answer questions there as well. Thank you. Thank you both Steph and Justine. We're going to squeeze in one more question. Um, and this is, I don't know anyone who would go to meetings on the subject I am most interested in. How can I get into those meetings? Network. <laughs> um, I know it gets said a lot, probably, especially if you look at all of the career boot camp sessions, but there's a reason for that. Um, so uh, find out, are there any communities of practice either within your organization or within the, the GC um, who are talking about that subject? and make a connection, like reach out and ask, you know, can we have a coffee chat? And then from there, that can be an opportunity or window into like 
getting um, experience attending those meetings with those networks or communities of practice. Um, so I think that that would probably be the best, like your best bet. Um, or just start asking around like for your contacts, like, do you know anybody who works on X, Y, or Z? Um, and hopefully someone will be able to connect you to the right people so that you can get those opportunities. Thanks, Jeff. Justine, did you have anything to add? Yeah, just quickly, I'm thinking of the visual representations that we used to have, which worked really well. Um, and I think we need to do more work to promote them more, but you could add Take Me With You to your signature blog. If you're an employee who's wanting to be involved in Take Me With You, or if you're a manager showing that you support Take Me With You. So we're not completely there yet with having everyone uh, aware of that across the GC, but something, a goal for the future would be to have those who support it and who are interested in opportunities to have that visual representation on their signature block. And I think that would go a long way to, to be able to feel comfortable to approach managers and so that you know, uh, you know who's supporting and who's involved. So something to think about. No, thank you. Absolutely. Um, that's a de that's definitely a great tip. And you are both a wealth of knowledge. I know I'm definitely going to have to go back and watch the YouTube uh, channel and just rewatch the session and implement these take me with you tips into meetings uh, I attend and, and into the environments that I put myself in, because it's definitely, I think, uh, a resource in a way for the future of the GC. But um, before we close, I'd like to give the floor to Steph for a call out to the GC community. So over to you, Steph. Thank you, Mackenzie. Uh, so um, Career Bootcamp 2016 was where I first heard about Take Me With You. And that event was a springboard for my grassroots leadership of the initiative. Um, I still have my note here from when I attended uh, that event. And I wrote, how do I bring Take Me With You to Health Canada, which is the department I was in at the time. Um, my Take Me With You co-leads and I are looking for diverse new leaders to take the initiative and evolve it for a new era of inclusion. Um, this is a volunteer role that's best supported um, by management, so you can embed it with your day job. Um, and if you're interested in learning about um, maybe taking on the baton and, and uh, leading Take Me With You, um, reach out to me. Um, Amanda Bloom and Julie Crabtree, our email addresses are in the chat. Um, and you can also find me on LinkedIn or Twitter. But um, we're going to be looking to build a new leadership team and hand leadership over with dedicated uh, mentorship and support to help you succeed in building out um, new tools and thinking about um, those some of those things that we talked about, like take me with you for um, in a hybrid work environment and take me with you to increase representation and inclusion um, at our decision-making tables. So reach out if that's something that you're excited about and thank you so much for your time. I'm gonna turn it back over to Haley to close us out. Thank you so much, Steph, Justine and Mackenzie. That was so insightful with all of your comments and I can't wait to watch the recording later. We have one final polling question for everyone. Uh, the results from the poll will not be shared. It's just for our own purposes. Uh, the question is, was this session a good use of your time? Yes, no, or I don't know. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. In addition to this session, we will be discussing lateral moves for the win at 1 p.m. and leadership styles that build success at 2.30. There is also an opportunity to network with other GOC employees, which will take place on Wonder Me from 4 till 5 p.m. And today we will have a few of the diversity and inclusion networks joining us. So make sure you come out and talk to the networks and see how you can get involved. The link to all of the sessions, as well as the networking event, can be found on the VXPO. As with the previous sessions, all of the resources will be available on the wiki page and the recording of the event will be available on our YouTube channel. Thank you all so much and have a great day.